Hi guys, today we are discussing droopy monstera. The main reason the monstera get droopy is that they don't get enough light. All monsteras want is loads of light, as much light. All those people that say they don't like direct light, lies. They don't care that they're like brown and that they don't care. They just want light so they can go really big and fenestrated. And if you don't give them enough light, what they do is they go looking for it. So the petioles, which is the bit that attaches the stem to the leaf, they get really long because they're trying to find light. And the stem also gets really long and like skinny. And the leaf just weighs it down. It's not gonna die unless you're keeping it in a cupboard. It's probably getting some light, but not enough light to keep it all perky and upright because it's trying to move over there. And you can keep spinning it, but the petioles, it'll just be droopy all the way around then because the petioles will still be too long and the leaves will weigh the plant down. Another reason why your monstera is droopy is that it's thirsty. There's a thing in plants called turgid pressure, which basically the petiole and the stems and stuff fill with water and that kind of keeps it all nice and plump and helps it stand up. The water in within the plant will give it its shape and if it doesn't have enough it'll sort of just collapse. There are a couple of things you can do. There's a few things you can do. So you can water it more. You can check that the soil's not compacted. So you could be watering it every day. If the soil's really compacted and the water's just like running through any holes in it or between the soil and the pot, the, plant, the roots won't be taking in any water. You can also check for root rot. You may be discovering that you are in fact an underwaterer you can water it more, but you could also increase the density of the soil. So add in some more like coir or something like that, just to make the soil retain more water. There is a little hack you can do, which was famous on TikTok like three years ago, which is you can put the aerial roots in water. This can be helpful. This is not like this amazing life hack for making a monstera healthier. If you have a really big monstera, some of the leaves will be a long way away from the water source and the water is having to travel against gravity, which even though the plant is designed to move it, it can be easy to have the water closer so you can dip your aerial roots, you know, have a couple of strategically placed cups and that will increase the turgid pressure. It may seem like it magically makes the monstera produce another leaf. It's not magic, it's just getting more resources. Uh, and it's a kind of a one-time thing. You can keep adding more and it doesn't look amazing, but it is something you can do if you don't like the droopy look of a monstera. Bear in mind that if you take the, the water away, it will just collapse again. Now, another reason that your monstera might be droopy also ties into the turgid pressure thing, and it's humidity. Monstera are pretty happy in amb ambient humidity. They've got pretty thick, waxy leaves. They're not that fussed. They don't like super dry air. If you give them really high humidity, that will massively benefit them, but they don't need it. If you want them to grow faster and grow bigger leaves and grow in generally kind of better condition, it is better. And all that happens is that the gas exchange is needed to photosynthesize and respirate and for the monstera to do all the monstera things it needs to do. Having high humidity just helps it do that faster and more efficiently. And having the water like move and oxygen move in and out of the leaves also can help boost turgid pressure and help your plant stay more upright. Good humidity for Monstera is not gonna replace good care. It's kind of, it will definitely help it, but it's more like the cherry on the top as opposed to like, you're better off sorting out your watering and that kind of thing. Another thing that can make Monstera droop is pests. It's a Monstera, it's probably thrips. And the, only thing you can do is get rid of them. If you've looked and you don't think there's pests on it, f fine, 100%. But even if there's not pests on it, there will be dust and stuff which will be stopping it photosynthesized. So I would get some Castile soap. Castile soap's just soap that hasn't had any bleach or anything added to it. Just like if you make soap, it's the base soap that you buy. Put a drop in a spray bottle and spray it down and wipe the leaves. If you do that regularly, not only will it keep the pests under control, it will get rid of any dust and stuff that will stop your monstera from photosynthesizing. The reason that the plants droop when they've got pests on them is that th they literally suck out the juices that are keeping it upright. Another issue I've kind of touched on is root issues. Now root issues vary a lot. I know somebody who was insistent that she didn't have root rot but everything about the plant suggested that it did. Turned out the cat had been peeing in the pot. I'm not accusing anybody's cat here but just check. If you need to keep 
your cats out of the pot. I'll link a article below that will give you a few tips on how to do that. You may need to try a few, it hugely depends on the tenacity of your cat. But whether whatever the issues are with the roots, basically if it doesn't have the plant doesn't have decent roots, it can't get any water into the plant, which will make the plant look droopy. If you take the plant out of the pot and you realise it has no roots, with Monsera it's not as big of a deal as it can be for other plants, put it in some water, put some sort of aerating plant in it. I like java moss. Or you can keep on top of like changing the water. I prefer aquatic plants. And wait for it to root again. Don't worry about using the wrong soil with Monstera. Just use, if you underwater, use house plant potting mix that you've bought from a shop. It's generally pretty dense and will retain water for... It's as dense as I would ever go. I wouldn't go denser than that. So it's going to retain water for a decent amount of time. If you're in overwater, then use... Add things like bark, perlite, even like lecker, just to break up the soil, get some air pockets in there. Also just stop watering it so much. I know it's difficult. Once you've kind of established that you've got a root issue, whatever it is, you need to sort of start growing those roots back. Now the fastest way to do that and not lose leaves, now you might lose leaves because it hasn't got enough roots to support them, so you might lose them anyway, but the best way to sort of bring it back as quickly as possible is to really keep an eye on the humidity, the temperature and the light that you've got. You need to balance all three. To be fair, like light and warmth together will do fine without the humidity, but the humidity really gets that that kind of, that's what will preserve your leaves. But you want a balance of three. Um, so move your plant to a windowsill, a warm, a warm windowsill. If you don't have a warm windowsill, like a heat mat or put it under a grow light or something like that. But it's the, it is the heat, the light and the humidity, which are the things that will really bring it back. Watering it, more or less won't help unless you were already kind of doing it wrong. One of the most common causes of droopy monstera is transplant shock. Whether that's when you brought it home from the shop or often after being repotted, they can just droop. Nothing about the way they evolved was gonna think that somebody was gonna take them from the rainforest and put them in their house. That They don't know what to do. They're already doing their best. And if it's come straight from a garden centre, it may have come from the Netherlands the week before or wherever. We just don't know what, what we don't know what they've been through. So you do need to give it time to recover. Don't overwater. Try not to underwater, but overwatering will just freak it out more. Again, warmth, light, humidity. When it comes to repotting, one of the biggest issues that I see, one of the things I see a lot is that it's been put in too big of a pot. Monstera like being tight in their pot. So if they go from, especially if it's gone from being very root bound to being in a massive pot, for one thing it is just pretty shocking for it, but for another thing it will try to maintain a status quo. So equilibrium would have been a much better word than status quo, but it's too late now. So it will try and grow roots as much as possible and that might, might cause droopage in the leaves because it's diverting its energy to roots. I don't know why they do this. I just know that they do. You may not get it to grow more leaves, but the making sure that it's warm enough, got enough light and that it's humid enough will preserve the leaves that you have. So when it is ready to go, you can, you know, it's kind of ready. I could tell you to just pot it down, down pot it, you know, put it in a smaller pot. And if it's in a massive pot and it's a tiny plant, it will need to go in a smaller pot. But if you think it's in a pot that is appropriate for the size, leave it and just let it do its thing and try to care for it as much as possible without, you know, don't be constantly fertilizing it and watering it. Just care for it like you normally would and check that it's not going drastically downhill. If it is going drastically downhill, you may need to down pot it. But I prefer to wait until it gets its roots to where it wants them to be because after that you do tend to get a bit of a growth spurt. Don't fertilise it after you've repotted it. It will, it's already shocked, but also it shouldn't need any nutrients because there's nutrients in the soil. If it's in lecker, you could do a very diluted nutrient mix, but you're gonna see droopage with lecker because that is it. It's having to regrow its entire root system. So that is normal. I should have mentioned grow lights when I mentioned increasing the light at the start, but I didn't, so I'll mention them here. Grow lights and monstera are a bit of a weird one because I, I don't I don't recommend monstera have grow lights just because I think other plants could benefit from them and they're quite difficult to put under a grow light just because of the size and the way they grow. I would tend to put a monstera near a window. If it is looking like it's in bad condition and then a grow light might be a good option just because it's got the added warmth and being a window, being near a window might not be so warm. But in general, 
I don't tend to bother with grow lights for them just because they don't fit under them well. Right, I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye!